For our adventure, we will be delving into the world of Balls of Fury. Another one of those campy sports genres that people in the mainstream don't really consider sports. This story features a young person called Randy. Randy Daytona, a hero, the best at ping pong. Oh, look at the Terminator guy. <laughs> He's gotta be bad. He's about to kill it once again in the Summer Olympics. His dad is pretty late and he's worried. Of course, he cares a lot about what his dad thinks about his performance. Then Randy's like, why the hell are those Chinese people behind you staring at you like the freaking Grim Reaper's family reunion? He realizes that his dad got in trouble with these guys and he owes them money. Going up against his competitor, Wolfstag, Randy Daytona wouldn't ordinarily be nervous, but he is because now he knows his dad is possibly gonna get killed if he loses. Loses. Poor Randy is distracted and ends up missing altogether. Look out! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What are you holding up? What are you holding up? Unfortunately, this embarrassing turn ends up ruining Randy's life. I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> Why is that funny? Why is that funny? Like, there's so many adults, like, okay. I don't even understand why that fun why why is that funny? The top boss bad guy orders the triad dudes to take the father away. Unfortunately, it's the end of the role for old pops. Chum chum. Jesus! <laughs> I don't know why that was hilarious. It's just such a hilarious reaction, like right before you die. And yeah, for the rest of the movie, the father's dead, but we just never really know. After this embarrassment and Randy feeling as though he's the one responsible for his father's death, he goes into retirement. The next time we see Randy, he's being introduced by a parakeet. Sorry, cock too. Obviously, he's all grown up and he is very unhappy with what he's doing now. He's still doing ping pong, but he's trying to, you know, <laughs> entertain people who are on death's doorstep. He's finished his performance, but at this point in time, he really doesn't care. The man who was his volunteer apparently has a heart attack from him beating the ping pong balls on his head. As a result, as if things can't get any worse, he gets fired. Not gonna lie, he's, he's kinda hot though. Steamy eyes and that masculine head. The FBI pays him a visit and tells him that they need his help. Now this is where things don't make sense, and I understand this is a comedy movie and it's made for fun, but that also means that it is fair game to make fun of it. After Randy is recruited by FBI agent Ernie Rodriguez, he's a little bit taken aback as to why they need him. Well, it just so happens that the guy they're trying to get is the man who killed Randy Daytona's father. His name is Feng. They want to get this guy because apparently he's been selling guns. The illegal kind. I guess his dad really is dead because there's a headstone there. Okay, so they do address that in this movie. Uh, So hot. Um, For some reason, getting wet one more time gives him the drive to want to work with the FBI and to get an invitation to play alongside Feng or to infiltrate Feng's organization. He has to be good. He has to defeat championships. Once he wins enough, that will garner the attention that he needs to be accepted into the gang. Well, not the gang, but into the competition so he could be amongst them. Just one more thing. Randy has to beat this guy. First up, we have Andy, um, Randy Daytona versus our four-time Western Conference champion, The Hammer. Okay, right off the bat, I know that everyone's thinking that it's going to be totally easy to get this guy, just wipe him off the map. But oh no, he has something up his sleeve. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's so amazing how when you're so good at something, everyone treats you like a king. Damn, Randy. This movie does a great job with the suspense when it really matters because we're like, Randy's gonna win, but they want us to think that he's not gonna win because we're playing up this other guy. <laughs> Can you dig it? He didn't win. Apparently Randy is a bit rusty and hasn't played competitively in 19 years. Oh. Ew. 
Ooh. Oh my god. I've never wanted to hit someone so hard. Now they got a karate kid, Randy, to train him to prepare him for the championships. My thing is the FBI can get anybody they want. Why would they take the time, knowing that time is of the essence, to train Randy, who is rusty and hasn't played competitively in 19 years, rather than taking someone like that guy that just won against him? It just makes no freaking sense. The only reason that the FBI agent recruited him in the first place is because he was a champion. So this guy loses to somebody else who was clearly a real champion, and you choose Randy. Like, it, I don't even get it. So they take the time to train Randy. I don't know how long they're gonna need to get him unrusty with this guy. He's blind, by the way. Get out, I don't teach you quite know. So apparently these guys are not allowed to teach white people. Okay, wow. I mean, not even gonna lie. As much as I love my China, they are low key. <laughs> Moving on, the old man tells him the story of how Fang was his most gifted pupil. But the guy didn't finish his training. Remember, Fang is the bad guy that they're going after. Wait a minute, wasn't this guy in Beauty and the Beast, the Beast's Gaston's friend or something? <laughs> Whoops! Look, they have the same body shape and stuff. Leave me alone. Jesus, Altiori, that's fat cyst! How is it when you're making a comparison with two people that look like, you know, alike in a way? No. Moving on. At the dinner table, Randy finally proves to this guy that he's worthy to be taught. I feel like that was just convenient for the plot. Just because he caught a ball, or caught two of the balls, he's now worthy to be trained, even though the gang will take away this guy's entire fortune and banish him from the Chinese community. If he teaches a white person, why would you put that on the line, even after saying you don't teach whales? Does he not teach whales because of his previous pupil, who was also a white person? Okay. Turns out that Dr. Wong, I just call him Dr. Wong for some reason, he's not actually a doctor, he's a trainer, but it just sounds more special that way. It's not actually gonna be the one teaching Randy his nieces. Fong's Mushu Palace, how can I help you? What? Won't I show the Fong? Yes, Wong was just squeezing his balls with his chopsticks. This girl is really good. The ultimate person to train Randy so that he can beat whoever the hell he's gonna go up against. This was Mary Suing before Mary Suing was a thing. This freaking Cole Drogo looking dude is like, that's no fair. She tries to teach him the proper technique, you know, just to be a good sport. And he's like, you coming on to me, girl. All right, if we're gonna play this game, I like this. Mm -mm -mm. And you know what's coming next. She roasts his ass. Like, she tears his ass up. And they even say it. The characters themselves almost kind of break the fourth wall. Because I'm thinking the same thing. He desperately wants to help. And I don't know what it is with these movies. But the girl, warrantedly, rightfully so, decides to defend herself. Or just to teach the guy a lesson. And all of his friends try to jump the one girl. And the uncle just sits there and watches. I mean, I know that that's his niece. And he knows that she can take care of herself. But, well, what am I talking about? He's freaking blind. I wish you weighed like 40 pounds. Exactly. What is she, Superman? Not only that, but what the hell was that? Why would he grab her just to turn her around? What were you gonna do, stare her to death? Of course, sexy Randy's like, let me go in there and help her. I gotta do something, even though I'm in a room full of people who know martial arts or probably don't know martial arts. I don't know what martial arts has to do with ping pong, but it does. <laughs> part of the entire movie because <laughs> he legit looks scared <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> so bad handsy guy with the horrible Chinese accent threatens the old man and is like, you'll be sorry, Wong. And then I guess it runs in the family or maybe because there's a showman of respect to the elderly. But once again, the face, the dragon. 
and now you've woken the dragon. Let me tell you what you can tell the dragon. <coughs> Uh, how is it he had the strength to do that? Could the little one not have pulled Ugh, this freaking movie? By the way, this is the dragon of which they speak. Hardly anyone has ever beaten her, but Randy does. Come on, little kid. Don't be so hard on yourself, you know? You got mad skills. Oh! He's gotten the attention of Feng, who sends his henchmen after him to invite him to the ping pong match. They're under world black market version of it. I don't know how long they've been working with the FBI or how long this has been going, but it seems as though months have spanned by in this movie. I can't really ever tell, but it is a comedy, so I guess it's to be expected that they do this in a couple of days. Is that the guy from Community in the back? Yep, it's the uh, pervy Dean. They finally reach the area. Of course, they had to smuggle some FBI stuff up their asses, not the old man. This is why it makes no sense, and I'm guessing that a lot of time has passed by because supposedly, like, these guys are in love now or something. Go ahead and kiss her already! I thought you said that he wasn't allowed to touch your niece. Oh, how sweet they kiss! Kissing turns to this. I don't know what's happening right now. It's not that serious, or maybe it is, I don't know. Something really sexy about a guy smuggling something all up in his ass. Anyway, by the way, one other piece of important information. The reason why Randy got spearheaded into an invitation and fighting the dragon in the first place is because this guy apparently went and spread the word that the, he was teaching a white man. And that is a disgrace of the elders. They would end up banning Wong, just like I said, unless the white man won for him, which is so freaking backwards. That's why he fought against little dragon and that's why he has homing devices up his ass right now. They finally reached the mob boss's organizational facility. Why is he walking like that so obvious? This guy apparently who has been seen on the outside is not even the real guy. He is the henchman of the boss. Christopher Walken is the boss. Yes, interesting. Ping pong. Or, as the Chinese say, ping pong. Sport. I don't think if a movie came out like this today, people would be so happy about it. I don't know. What's supposed to be funny here and is actually funny. You come off very sensitive to some people, I can imagine. Anyways, Fang hosts his black market ping pong tournament. While they're there, while Daytona is ping-ponging about. Rodriguez is going to plant the homing devices and gather enough information and evidence against Fang to take him down. We also see da -da -da -da, Daytona's old opponent, the one he lost against when he tripped over the bag thing and his dad got taken away and killed. This is a big day as the tournament rules require a winner, first time score and sudden death. That's what sudden death means. Like as soon as you score a point against the other person, the other person loses. May I invite you to select from one of Mr. Fang's courtesans of pleasure? <laughs> We're gonna skip past that part. Game point. He wins against his first opponent. That's what sudden death means. Understandably, Randy wants to yeet himself out of that joint, but that's not gonna happen. They're essentially prisoners now until the tournament is finished. Christopher Walken, who would make a very great Dracula, I don't know if he actually played Dracula, tells him about the dreaded ping pong table that self-destructs if you stop playing. Because things are now way more dangerous than they thought, Rodriguez tries to take Randy out of there. He does this by breaking his hand. Okay, so I would be on the ground in a puddle of my own urine if that happened. <laughs> Unfortunately, while Fang buys this and disqualifies Randy from the competition, making this guy the winner, he also tells them that he's learned that he is actually an FBI agent, or at least this guy is, and he's already disabled their homing device. The homing device that's supposed to tell the other FBI agents to move in. Now, whether Randy likes it or not, he has to finish the competition. And he does want to, because he wants to avenge what happened to his dad. Basically, winning this competition would correct what happened years ago, which actually won't, but it'll make him feel better. 
This guy changes the rules. At the last second, he brings in Maggie, Randy's piece, to fight against him. So if any one of them win, the other person dies. That wasn't fair. Randy, I'm trying to sacrifice my life for our love. Stop being such a dick. It's so adorable, but it's so freaking cringe. It sounds like a seven-year-old boy wrote the script. When it comes to the romantic part, it's so freaking childish. Like, the way that I guess, like, little boys, or little girls even, would imagine their love talking to them, or what their romance would be like, this would be it. Jesus Christ, this movie's stupid. This guy's like, okay, this is stupid. Kill both of them. What is this, an Italian mafia movie? Well, the good news is our friend Rodriguez actually had a second homing advice just in case the first one was compromised. So the FBI agents are actually on their way. They just have to stay alive long enough for that to happen. If you want to find out who these guys are, you gotta watch the movie. It might interest you to find out some very strange things and uh, you'll understand the meaning behind why they're making faces like this. Right when Fang is about to kill Randy, he's like, no, don't you want to know which one of us is the better white person student? And of course, Fang is like, of course I do. So they play the death match on the death ping pong ball table thing. Lots of rock. You're probably wondering what the hell is going on over here. Well, apparently this guy made it so that the rules are, you don't have to actually use the table, you can use anything. I could see that there would be a lot of ways around that stipulation, especially on this bridge right here, which is why this part makes no sense. It seems like Randy's about to lose, but no, it turns out that he's the winner because this guy is the worst student because he dropped out before he learned the final lesson, which is the backhand. And because of that, I guess he wins. So yeah, the suit that he has on actually amps up the voltage every time they miss. And the final voltage is supposed to kill. Ah! You know you did. They all live happily ever after. Everyone's safe and this guy starts his school. How about someone kick you in your snatch to see how it feels? Master Wong is so happy he has taught well and he is now victorious. Oh. First of all, how the hell did he fall forward like that? How did he jump up in the air and fall forward? It's not how you fall into a chasm. Look, check it, look, he's walking. He slips on something. I don't know what the hell he slipped on, but he slips on something. And I guess... Okay, I mean, whatever, I guess. But he's doing totally fine and no one is concerned as to whether or not the very old blind man is impaled, his hips are broken, his back is broken. Oh, he's totally fine. His niece is just like, oh, he'll, he'll be all right. Cause I guess these people are made of freaking titanium and he's got the girl. And if you're wondering how a bunch of the dead people are suddenly alive, it's, you know, it's the bloopers. They're just celebrating the movie. That's what they do in comedies like this to make sure that everyone knows it's fake. I don't even think that this girl Maggie is Chinese. She doesn't even look Chinese. Is she Chinese? I don't think so. So, she looks like she's mixed. And if that's the case, they should kind of bend their rules just a little bit to outsiders because the Chinese do not like people mixing with outside people. Okay, anyways, this was Balls of Fury. It was an amazing movie. If you like stupid movies like Kung Fu, enter the pissed. I mean, Kung Pao, enter the pissed. The pissed, really, dude? <sighs> Kung Pao, enter the fist. I love that movie, but God was that movie ass, but it was so hilarious. Maybe, maybe one day, I don't know. Anyways, you guys should totally check this movie out. It's actually one of those that if you're freaking tired to the point where you feel drunk, you'll totally enjoy it. Maybe not. Great to pass the time and one of the best stupid movies that I have reviewed so far. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. Oh God, no.